everyone, welcome to Mind Brain Talks, the place where you find diverse and scientifically accurate information regarding psychology, psychotherapy, neuropsychology, neuroscience and research methods every single week. My name is Bruno Faustino, I am a licensed clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist who has been working as a therapist, researcher and educator for the past few years. Here in Mind Brain Talks, I discuss and describe different topics from psychology to neuroscience and I try to explain them the best as I can for you to understand a little bit more about it. All contents here are just for educational purposes and it's not intended to diagnose any psychiatric condition or neurological disorder. So, without further delay, let's jump for today's content. So today, let's talk about complex intention. Typically, we don't think in attention as a differentiated process, but as we will see here, attention may be divided in several sub-processes or if you prefer, in several attentional processes. But first, let's see the manuals that I recommend to you today. The first is the principles of neuropsychology. The second is the fundamentals of human neuropsychology. The third is the neuropsychology handbook. The fourth is the handbook of clinical neuropsychology. The fifth is the neuropsychological assessment. And the sixth is the clinical neuropsychology. So now let's take a look on complex attention. Attention is a complex mental or neurocognitive process that allows human beings to focus, select and maintain mental resources in internal and external stimuli. Complex attention may also be viewed as a complex neurocognitive ability needed to process relevant personal information to interpret environmental and internal cues. Also, complex attention is required in everyday life. There are some determinants of complex attention. Amplitude the quantity of information that we can pay attention to. Intensity typically is understood as the amount of attentional resources which are paying attention to a given stimulus. Shifting Alternating attention is the ability to be able to change the focus of attention from one event to another. And the focal point typically it's distinguished by three major aspects. Direction which may be external or internal amplitude. We can focus our attention to one or several stimuli. And control, where our attention can be voluntary or involuntary. Also, here I will use the clinical model of Schaubeck and Mathier, which is a model that helps us to understand several sub-attentional processes that are required to process information. Arousal which typically is described as the automatic reaction towards the stimuli. Focus attention, the ability to be focused in one specific stimuli. Maintain attention, the ability to maintain attentional resources and respond correctly for a long period of time. Selective attention, the ability to select and reject irrelevant stimuli. Alternate attention, Ability to change the attentional focus between two or more stimuli. And divided attention. Ability to focus attention on two or more tasks at the same time. Now you understand why I call this complex attention. Attention may be divided in these five sub-processes. Also, we can find several attentional difficulties or disorders. Here I will just describe a summary of all the attentional difficulties because I will produce different videos in the future specifically talking about these aspects, okay? Typically talking about attentional difficulties. So, one that may be described is a prosexemia, which is the total absence of attention, typically in coma. Hypoprosexemia, which is the decrease of intention. Pseudoprosexemia. Decrease of attention in complex environments. Paraprosexemia, abnormal direction of attention. Typically, when individuals start to pay attention to irrelevant stimuli, it seems that there are some impairments in the attentional process. And hyperprosexemia, which is an excessive increase of attention. Typically, this is observed in the bipolar disorder when individuals have a mania crisis. So now, let's see the summary and key points. Complex attention may be viewed as a complex neurocognitive domain because it has several types of attentions which are differentiated in different attentional processes. 
and there are several difficulties or several disorders that we can attribute to impairments in the attentional processes. Well, it's all for today. Don't forget to see the video description regarding to this team if you want to see the manuals and the books that I recommend to you. Also, if you like what I'm doing, like, share and subscribe this video. It's very important to support the channel. Also, you can leave a comment in the comment section below to express your mind and to express your thoughts. Let me know what you think about all the things that you saw here. Welcome to Mind Brain Talks and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!